Hey everyone, I thought I'd do a video on the yield curve because you've probably heard me talk about it lately on social media and I just wanted to explain why I'm looking at it, what it can mean for the economy and what things might perform well or not perform well if this uh, yield curve starts to uninvert. So looking at it here, you can see on the chart that we have actually broken out of the neckline of a double bottom. Okay, I'll put in, go into the weekly here where you can see. And you can see that we had this falling wedge into a double bottom. And now we've had a weekly close above that neckline. Prior to that, we've had bullish divergence, which is always something I look for. I like to see that the trend prior to it was weakening before we then start to reverse. So we have an official Dow Theory double bottom reversal. This is the yield curve. What I've shown you there is just how you can chart it on TradingView. All right, so looking at where we are now, you can see this line is the zero line and it's often referred to as the recession indicator okay whenever we get below the line normally a recession follows okay so you can see here down recession down recession down recession down recession down recession down recession all right which is why it's quite and again the kind of the easy way to think about it is like the yield curve is like a snapshot of interest rates for bonds of different durations. And when it's normal, upward sloping, it's usually a good sign for the economy. But when it inverts, like it has, it can indicate economic uncertainty and potential trouble ahead. And I guess the easy way to break it down for you is if you think about it, you know, if you've got a million dollars and you were to go and give it to someone for 10 years, you would expect a lot better returns for giving it for 10 years than you would for two years. Okay, because you're having to give your money up for longer. But if they're paying more for the two years than the 10 years, it means that they believe that there's trouble ahead. All right, so if you kind of think about it like that, you can see logically why. The two years should not be paying more than the 10 year. All right, so that's kind of an easy way and how you, why it often does then lead to economic downturn. As you can see here, we are the most inverted we've been since the 1980s. All right, so, you, you know, I always preach that often the answers you seek in the future can be found in the past, which is why I always look at past data to inform my future predictive technical outcomes. OK, it doesn't mean that it's guaranteed to happen, but, you know, I always talk about if six people have jumped off a cliff prior to me and have fallen to their death, I'm not going to be the seventh person thinking this time's different. All right, I'm going to go off the data is I'm not going to make it, so I won't do it. Similar thing in, in stock market. If, you know, during these times when th similar things like this have happened before, I could expect similar things to happen like that again this time around. So looking at what's similar to this period back here as well, back in the 1980s. As you can see, it's the only one where we were really um, down and inverted for a long time. And on top of that, it's the only one where you've had multiple recessions within that time as well. Every other time has been a short one, single recession, single, single. All right, so we are down here again for the first time. This is why I believe we're not going to just have one recession and then we're out of here, we're in the clear. I believe we're in for an extended bear market, a long time, like I'm talking several years of just underperformance. Also, they've never, ever, ever tackled inflation the first time. And that's what happened here. They thought they tackled inflation. And then they didn't, and then they didn't, and then that's why they went in and out of recessions multiple times. Okay, you can see here the annual inflation rate from 1979-1979. You can see we had peak inflation came up, we had tens, and then it lowered. Good, we've got it sorted in the late 70s, but then look, it came back and roaring again. All right, so looking at the data that we've got now, this is the same kind of thing that we're at now, is that we're looking like we've had our inflation, we've peaked, but going by the things like oil and energy, it's looking like inflation might be coming back again. Okay, so I th everyone's just wanting this thing to crash so they can buy the bottom and get rich because we've been conditioned that way because of things like the COVID drop. You know, COVID drop happened March 2020, buy the dip, boom, you were instantly rewarded and made a lot of people very, very rich. GFC, instantly buy and you're rich. Tech bubble, buy and you're rich. Okay, what they don't realize is we're actually similar to here. And that was not a buy the bottom and you're instantly rich. Let's unpack the chart now.
Okay, as you can see here, during that period, we actually were in a sideways market. Let's pretend this is the COVID drop. We've come up, we've pumped, we've pumped, we've had a correction. Then we have a pump. I bought the, bought the bottom, I'm rich. We made new highs. You've retraced the whole game. Bought the bottom, I'm rich. We're going up again, made new highs. It actually retraced the whole game plus more. All right, so can you see how going off history, actually this kind of time here is where we actually go into a massive sideways market, which is why I'm saying just be prepared that this could be a long drawn out, you know, the, some things that you buy now could stay at those levels or even below for decades. Like if you look at the period from there, that's 1966. And if you had bought in these peaks here, you haven't really gone and made any money until this period here, which is 80 cents so in you know, a decade, more than a decade afterwards. If you had bought there, then yes, you're sweet. But how do you know that it's there and it's not that one or it's not that one or you know something like that? Okay, so you've just got to be aware that during this kind of thing, we actually did move into a massive sideways market during that time. What I've got here is what's called the Phillips curve. And the Phillips curve, it was invented by A.W. A. Phillips. And he first observed that there was a relationship in the 50s between inflation and unemployment. And really what this graph shows you is that trade-off between two important economic factors there. Okay, what they have is what's called an inverse relationship. In simple terms, it means that there's an inverse or op opposite relationship between that inflation and unemployment. This means that when one of these factors goes up, the other one tends to go down and vice versa. Okay, so as inflation increases, unemployment goes down, and as inflation drops, unemployment goes up. So knowing that, knowing what's been happening right now in the environment is we've, you know, at the moment we've had peak inflation for this time at least. Like I said, it can come back multiple times and it's looking like it will. But that is how you can get multiple recessions because if we've tackled inflation this first time, then unemployment starts to rise because inflation is coming down. Okay, but then it can come in multiple strands, which is how then you can get those multiple recessions and things of multiple times of unemployment, etc. How the yield curve works as well is the, the steeper it uninverts, I guess the kind of more sick it is and the higher the inflation is and the harder it is for us to kind of get out of here, which is why when it was here, it took so long to get back out again. We had multiple sessions. When it's just come under, we can kind of recover and get back out. But the fact that we're so uninverted is another sign of just the how sick we actually are, really. So here's a post I did in February 14th, 2022, and this was me predicting that the um, the yield curve was about to invert, okay? So I knew that bad times were, were, were coming ahead. On top of that, it also enabled me to know that the bond yields were about to shoot up, and it helped me then lock in low interest rates as well. So, you know, tracking these kind of things can really help knowing where your interest rates are going and help you with locking in your fixed uh, interest rates, et cetera, as well. So going from that now, let's actually look back on history at other times and kind of what has happened during the, these kind of periods. Okay, so primary bear markets are born amidst prosperity and the third of boom phase of the preceding bull market, they result from and serve to correct. So this is why they happen. Bear markets happen because they serve to correct periods of inflation, check, speculation, check, economic excess, printing all that money. Check. All right. Hamilton would warn his readers that no tree grows to the sky. And that is how that's by the dip, baby. It keeps going up. That it was the mentality that we had at the end of 2021. Just throw your money at anything and it will go, it'll make you money. And that is often when you're at that, um, yeah, that real speculation kind of part. And this is why I'm always talking about sentiment. Just as bull markets expired in periods of unrealistic optimism, and that's me when I posted bearish charts at the December 2021, no one agreed with me. Everyone laughed at me. Even other professional traders and people that have been doing it for decades were laughing. Okay, That is when you know when everyone's on one side of the boat, the other thing will happen. Same thing happens at the end of, end of a bear market when everyone's literally bearish. And if you think about when, when we bottomed even on this last rally, everyone was bearish, everyone w 
was expecting lower. It's that hopeless depression as well. Okay, history shows that the more inflationary and speculative the former, the more drastic the latter. So the more inflationary the bull run is, the more drastic the bear market is in duration. Bear markets average about 60% as long as bull markets. In extent, most bear markets retraced at least 50% of the preceding bull market. Of the 14 bear markets since 1896, only two in 1899 failed to wipe out at least half the gains. So that's a big chunk that actually wipes out half the gains and actually goes for 60% as long as the bull markets. Okay. We have been in a bull market since 09 there. Bull market, bull market, bull market. Excessive phase, straight to the moon. Lower low at the moment, lower high. If it breaks there, we have a lower, lower low again. Okay. Now looking at that, going by what he just talked about, okay, we've had nearly 5,000 days of bull market, which means that we should get at least a 60% correction off that. Okay, so 668 bars around the 400 kind of bar range, which takes us up to around that 2030. So pretty much what going off what he's saying is that really the rest of the decade is a write-off. Okay, on top of that, he also said that it should re retrace at least 50% of the gains. 50% of the gains brings it down to here, 2750. Now I want to show you something else that's quite important. This is RSI momentum price indicator. Look at what we have been diverging from, from that point. So while price has been going up, momentum has been going down. From this point here, it has been a weakening trend. Why has it been a weekend trend? They've just been printing, printing, printing. They've been saving the day, excessive phase. Okay, so that also aligns that when it, wherever momentum starts to happen, it will retrace back to that moment. So that is why I myself have a, a zone of it coming back to there. And just going off history and how bear markets work, it will do that as well. Again, everyone thinks it will happen in one day. No, it could happen in a long time to get back there. Okay, but going off that, you can see how then the TA is also aligning with what history says as well. Okay, so now going back to our yield curve, what what does it mean? All right, so an inverts, we can we know that it means that things might happen. Okay, so let's find out what historically has happened when the yield curve uninverts. Okay, this was the COVID mini recession that we had. So as you can see, high, 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 low, we broke out, we changed market structure, we went bullish, we uninverted. Boom, yield curve shot up. What happened to the market? Crashed. So when we uninverted, the market crashed. Okay, one piece of evidence, not enough data, let's get some more. Okay, next one. We had double bottom, broke the neckline, broke out, change of character. What happened on the NASDAQ? We had one last fake rally, and then we had massive GFC crash. All right, so it didn't happen straight away. We had one little fake out for a couple of weeks just to grab some exit liquidity, I guess. And then next minute, boom, we dropped significant amounts. Okay, oh, we've got now two times we've had historic crashes when the yield curve only inverts. Let's get more data, see what happens. Okay, this was the tech bubble. So higher, high, higher, low, higher, high, and then retested the support. All right, so we've changed our market structure. That is this period here. Lower, low, lower, high. We then had a historic crash on the stock market. Okay, starting to sense a pattern here. We've had three out of three times that we've had historic crashes when the yield curve uninverts. Okay, maybe three is a coincidence. Let's look for a fourth one. The 89 recession. Higher, high, higher, low. We broke out, changed market structure. Yield curve uninverts, recession. What happens on the stock market? Massive crash. All right, kind of too much data to ignore now, isn't there, okay? Four times out of four times, again, if four people jump off a cliff, fall to their death, I ain't gonna be the fifth per person thinking this time's different. All right, too much data, overwhelming. So now if the equities are possibly about to crash if we go out, what 
where can we put our money? Okay, so now we need to again look at history and see what might perform well during these times. Okay, looking at gold here, when we shot up here, it kind of corrected a bit and then performed pretty well. But, you know, a bit of evidence. Okay, we need, need, need more data. Gold, yeah, it did well, but then it also then went in a bit of a correction. So let's get some more data, but it at least had that initial pump from 1550 up to 2000, a good 30, 40% pump on gold, which your miners and stuff like that would have done a lot more than that. Let's get some more data. Okay, so gold here, when it broke out of the it we had a massive pump. It then retraced that move, tested that pump as support, and then went into a parabolic run. So again, it performs well overall, but it did have an initial pump and then a sell-off and then kept going. Let's get some more data. Okay, check bubble. When we broke out here, you can see the market absolutely tanked. What did gold do? Went into a parabolic run. That's been its best performer tech bubble time. Okay. During the tech bubble, obviously equities were really super expensive and then um, gold was historically undervalued. So then we need, again, more data to see, okay, well, are we similar to the GFC? Are we similar to the COVID crash? Or are we more similar to the tech bubble in regards to gold right now? Shiller P ratio would say that historically equities are the second, equal second most expensive it's ever been. That was the tech bubble. We are the same as the Great Depression at that level now as well. All right, so historically equities are extremely overvalued. This is the S&P 500 since the Great Depression. You can see we are at the top of the resistance channel right now, only seen two other times, one, Two. When were those two times? Great Depression, tech bubble, and now. When was the Shiller P ratio the most overextended it's ever been? Tech bubble, Great Depression. See the pattern? The midline is the average return to the mean. Big bear market, return to the mean. Bear market, return to the mean. Stay on the mean for years during the inflationary period. Tech bubble overextended, bottom of the GFC comes back to the mean. Back up. Extended inflation period, do we go back to the mean? Around that 24, 25, 2700 aligns with the data that was showing on that other, um, the since the divergence and how long bear markets should take. And again, if it goes to 2030, it has time to drift out until it gets out there to return to the mean. Okay, so if the Schiller P ratio is that level is not seen since the Great Depression and tech bubble, and the SP500 is at resistance level not seen since the tech bubble and Great Depression. Let's now look at the gold to SP500 ratio, so then we can see how how much gold it would take to buy the SP500. What this shows you is when equities are historically overvalued and when precious metals are historically undervalued and vice versa. Okay, so you can see here when we when it came down here, that was the top of the Great Depression. When the Great Depression hit, equity smashed. Gold performed well, or didn't go down as much as equities. Then here, this is your big bull run on the stock market after the Great, the Great Depression, coming back down to then the 70s when we went into the energy crisis. That's when then equities we know went sideways for 15 years, were underperformer, but commodities, precious metals did really well for you know and these are decade long cycles as well so great depression 30 to 42 12 years you know here 66 to 80 14 years that 80 to the tech bubble 20 years tech bubble to uh there 2011 11 years 2011 now down to here 10 11 years so can you see how like their decade long macro trends, which also aligns with those kind of things we talked about is that equities could underperform until 2030, you know, decade long. That's what I'm talking about. They're, everyone's wanting to buy their dip because they're going to be rich. They don't realize in that there have been historical times when if you bought the top of the Great Depression, top of the energy crisis, top of the tech bubble, stuff like that, that you actually had to wait a very, very, very long time to break even. Yes, it will eventually go up. They are designed to go that way. But there are periods of massive underperformance and massive sideways that you have to realize. 
okay so don't listen to these people that say by the dip it always goes up that if you're an 18 year old yeah possibly but even then what if you had to wait you know 20 years really you're then starting at 40 instead of starting at 20 so it's you know it's just about I guess not going all in in one spot, making sure that you're you're averaging in a certain time, so then you're getting the ups and the downs and stuff like that. But also just realizing that yes, there can be sideways movements for long periods of time as well. So you can see here we're down at levels where gold has historically had major macro trends for you know for a decade. Tech bubble, energy crisis, great 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 depression. Okay, so we're down at this level, and we're down at this level showing bullish divergence. So it's a weakening trend coming down into here. Will it then start to pull up from there? Okay, so again, these are just some signals. It really needs to get above this zone here, this 0.618, to confirm an uptrend. And then if it ever gets above there, then it's in a massive, massive uptrend similar to here. High, 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 low, and then it starts to go. All right, so just, you know, three very key charts all kind of telling the same thing and it's what I'm always talking about where the market tells you a story okay you can see the story that's unfolding within just looking at multiple charts and this is only a couple of charts I could literally show you a hundred but I'm just trying to show you a couple of easy ones that any any person that doesn't even know TA or things like that can actually start to see the picture that the market is painting just come back to the the yield curve here again and what I want to show you is see how the yield curve inverted but the recession didn't hit for a while after inverted after inverted after inverted after where inverted the recession won't come to after okay so the recession is lagging after the actual in the yield curve so that's why we and everyone's calling a recession but it's you know it doesn't come for after see that that inverted back in even 2006 it didn't come until 2008, two years later. Okay, so knowing that, let's now unpack what the average duration is of a recession after the yield curve inverts. And you can see here, inverted yield curves followed by wait for it recessions. So on average, it's 20 months after the yield curve inversion that we have a recession. That's average, okay? Here, 35 months could have been a lot longer. Here, 15 months could have been a lot shorter. So I guess the question is, where are we right now? Okay, we first inverted March 2022, which is when I put that post up as well, February that it was coming in March. Um, we are now just opened up October, so we're about 19 months in. If the average is 20 months, we're around coming where that average is coming. Okay, so again, it can go longer, it can go longer, just like the the seasons, summer, spring, winter and that, they don't come exactly on the date, they're just a rough estimate around that three months is when it happens. So again, at the average around this time now is when the recession will come. But again, it doesn't mean there's going to be one recession, we pop and then we start going on the moon again, because as we know, last time we were uninverted, we actually had multiple recessions, we had four recessions within that time. Do you really honestly think to yourself, all everything that's happened, all the dramas from COVID, all the money they had to print, all the everything that they've done, do you really think they can just fix it really quickly and then we start pumping again in the market a year later? Or have they done so much damage that it might take a bit of time to fix it? That's a question and only you can answer, but just ha have again, have a think about that. The only reason we came roaring out of the COVID crash is because they printed Astro astronomical amounts of money. The only reason we came out of the GFC and continued to roll out of the GFC is because they printed money every time there was a downturn or a problem. They printed, they printed, they printed, they printed. Okay, I've come back to the SP500 here because Dow Theory, one of his main principles is that volume must confirm the trend. Okay, and you, these are your volume bars here, and you can see we had nice increase in price action on nice increase in volume all the way up, up until the GFC. Okay, and then you can see your volumes topped out, and since the GFC, we've actually had lower in volume. See how this is declining going down? So this whole move is not being confirmed by volume. So the trend in the charts are saying that it's a weakening trend, the whole thing. 
if you also unpack while we've been moving, like I said, it's been artificially inflated from all of the money printing, which is why we now have high inflation. What does the Fed need to now do? They need to get that money back. Okay, they've filled up the bucket with a, a lot of water. They're now starting to drain the bucket off the water. So they need to bring it back and bring it back down. Okay, so again, can just the charts are aligning with everything that's been happening so far as well. And, you know, people are conditioned to just, whenever there's some kind of bad event, tech bubble, buy the dip, GFC, buy the dip, COVID, buy the dip, anything, buy the dip. But we've got to remember that things run in cycles and that there are definitely periods of massive sideways underperformance as well. And this is just, it, don't take my word for it. This is just data again go to the past to inform the future. S&P 500 above average returns. This is after the inversion, up until about 20 to 22 months. After that, below average returns after the inversion for the next 20 months. Okay, so this is historically after the yield curve has inverted. Around 20 months after you have massive below returns. Okay, this is just going off the data as well. So I hope this video helped, guys. Um, like I said, I'm not trying to scare you. I'm not trying to, you know, if you want to go and see any other bullish thing, go and watch anyone else how to tell you what you want to hear. All I'm doing is showing you past data to inform future. Okay, it doesn't mean it's going to be right. But like I said, often if you're seeking for answers in the future, look to the past. Okay, so it doesn't always repeat, but it does rhyme often very, very closely. So good luck. If you hope the video, please like and subscribe. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Take care, everyone.